If you're looking for the best motorcycle helmet speakers, here's a list you must see. We made this list based on our personal preference and sorted it based on the features, prices, quality, durability, and reputation of the manufacturers and customer feedback. Also, we've included options for every type of customer. So let's get started. At the first position of our list, we have seen a 20S1D. 20S1D features an interesting aerodynamic shape. It's small and obtrusive. Installing the unit onto the helmet takes just a few minutes. Attach the clamp to the helmet and tighten it up and then attach the main unit to the clamp. The main unit, as well as the clamp, is made of hard and thick plastic and look pretty solid. The controls are not as simple as we would like them to be. There are three buttons and one knob. Cena calls it jog dial. The jog dial button is on the front side of the main unit surrounded by the jog dial. There's another phone button on the back side of the main unit. Also, there's a so-called ambient button on the bottom of the clamp, and when you press it, it will pick up the sound from your surroundings and transfer it to the speakers so you don't have to remove your helmet to hear someone talking to you at the gas station. It's a nice and very useful additional feature. We were not quite happy about the fact that you have to control so many features, else music playback, GPS FM radio, intercom, etc. With only three buttons, the ambient button has only one function. It can get pretty confusing and it takes a lot of time, reading, and experimenting to master the controls. The microphone, especially that static boom mic, delivers an exceptional performance, even in a noisy environment. The noise cancelling feature works very well, and your voice will be loud and clear on the other end. On top of all the existing features, there's also the Cine Utility app, available for Android and Apple devices. You can use this app to set up the device initial and basic settings, set radio stations, voice commands, volume, configure groups, etc. The app is nice, but it's not very user-friendly. Moving on to the next at number 2 with Cena SMH1010. In terms of design, SMH10 is similar to 20S, but it has a thicker profile, and it's a little bit bulkier. It is available in black color only. The installation is smooth and hassle-free. It's supposed to go on the left side of the helmet, and it can be mounted on most helmet types. If you know what you're doing, you will need more than 50 min to install everything. The control buttons are basically the same as the controls on the 20S. You have a jog dial button slash dial on the face of the unit and phone button on the back side of the unit. You can use these buttons to turn on slash off the unit, pair with Bluetooth enabled devices, connect and communicate with other group members via intercom. Control the playback, answer slash and slash, make slash, reject slash, transfer calls, etc. Controlling everything with only two buttons and one knob can be a little bit confusing at first, and you will need some time to get used to the controls. The speaker performance is not amazing. It's more mid-centric than anything else. The bass is almost non-existent. The highs are present, but kind of bright. The speakers are not as loud as we have expected. The microphone, especially the boom mic, delivers an above-average performance. You can ride at 6 dimps and have an uninterrupted conversation. The mic does a great job at isolating the ambient noise. The person on the other end will hear you loud and clear. The number 3 position is held by Freedcon TCOMSC. After two expensive products, here's something much more affordable. Fredcon TCOM SC is priced under $60, or you can buy two for about $110. This device is maybe not as capable and versatile as the previous two, but you get what you paid for. In terms of design, this device looks slimmer than Cena headsets. It's also lighter and less rugged than Cena. Freedcon TCOM SC definitely looks less durable and less rugged than Cena devices. So, if you want to pay less, you will definitely have to make some compromises. The good thing is that the compromises are not huge. The installation is pretty simple. You can clamp it to the helmet and tighten it up, or you can stick it to the side of the helmet. On the bottom of the main unit, there's a headphone jack slash charging port. The mic and the speakers are connected via cable, and they cannot be separated, but you can detach them from the main unit in case you need to replace them. There's no additional IU export for connecting other non-Bluetooth devices. The installation should not take more than 10-15 minutes. The speaker slash headphones are actually louder than those on Cena SMH1010 and 20S. The bass response is not that impressive, but the bass is definitely more present than on previously reviewed Cena headsets. The microphone delivers an impressive performance. 
It isolates slash attenuates a significant portion of ambient noise, and it doesn't muffle your voice. Next at number 4 we have seen a SMH5 UNIF. SMH5 is basically a baby brother of the SMH10. In many ways, it looks the same as SMH10, but it's slightly smaller and lighter. They are similar in terms of design and build quality. The jog dial looks exactly the same. When it comes to installation, there's nothing out of the ordinary. You have to attach the unit to the helmet and find the right place for the speakers and for the mic. If you don't want to, you don't even have to attach the mic since the mic is not permanently connected to the speakers. The built-in battery delivers a significantly shorter talk time than SMH10. You will get up to 6 hours of talking and 150 in standby mode, about half of what you get with SMH10. The recharge takes 1.5 hours. The speakers are, are surprisingly loud. You won't be impressed by the bass, but it's there. The emphasis is on the mid-range frequencies and voices. As the oldest Cena headsets, SMH5 has a pretty good noise-canceling mic. It delivers more than satisfying performance. The number 5 position is held by Lexan LXB2. LXB2 is not different from the previously reviewed devices. It's slightly slimmer and lighter than Cena headsets, but the basic aerodynamic shape of the device is the same. It's made of plastic, but some parts of the main unit are rubberized. The overall build quality is on par with the price. Naturally, you will get more rugged build if you pay more, but for the price, you can't expect anything better. The controls are quite simple and easy to use. You have every single step and every single command nicely explained in the operation manual. There are four buttons, and two on the top panel are volume slash track buttons, and two on the front side are, are the intercom slash Siri button and function slash call slash play slash pause button. The micro USB charging port is on the back side. The buttons are large enough and easily accessible. The speakers are not the most impressive part of this unit. The bass is really weak and the mids are emphasized. There's a noticeable roll off in the treble region. The mic delivers a pretty good performance. It does isolate most of the noise at 6 dim, but if you are driving faster than that, it will pick up some noise and it will muffle your voice a little bit. The microphone does the job well. The number 6 position is dominated by Cardo Scalar Rider Pactock. Cardo is another industry leader, along with Cena when it comes to Bluetooth motorcycle helmet speakers. Pactock is their high-end flagship communication system. This is an amazing, but also quite pricey little device. The single pack is priced around $200, but you can buy a dual pack for less than $330. It's definitely more cost-effective to buy two at once. In terms of performance and number of available features, Pactock is even better than Cena 20S. The actual rival of Pactock is the latest Cena headset called Cena 30K, but we still prefer Pactock because it's a bit more reliable when it comes to riding in a group. If you are riding in a larger group of up to 15 people, Pactock should be your go-to communication device. Pactock has two Ford and JBL speakers. They are probably better than any generic pair of helmet speakers, but even these speakers are not perfect. The mids and voices are crystal clear, and that's the most important part. The mic, especially the boom mic, is pretty good. It managed to isolate most of the noise at 6 dimph. Riding at higher speeds could be problematic. The mic will pick up more and more ambient noise as the speed increases. Moving on to the next at number 7 with Cena SMH-10R. Cena SMH-10R is a modification of the previously reviewed SMH-10. In terms of features and functionality, it's practically the same as SMH-10. The only real difference is the lower profile. In terms of design, SMH-10R is different than other devices from the SMH series. It's much slimmer, and it doesn't have a jog dial. Whether you like it or not is up to you and your personal preferences. When it comes to build quality, we are not impressed. It seems solid enough, but we have expected something more rugged considering the price. The manufacturer claims that it is weather resistant, but there is no IP or IPX certificate to confirm that. Only Cardo devices are IP certified. This device won't break if it gets wet, but it is not fully waterproof. SMH-10R allows you to communicate with riders using other Cena and non-Cena communication devices. The intercom range between two riders under ideal conditions is 900 m, 980 yards, but in reality, you will get 400 m at best. The battery delivers up to 8 hours of talking per one charge. It takes to 2.5 to recharge the battery, and the good thing is that you can charge it on the go, and you can use it while charging. 
the microphone delivers very good performance. It isolates most of the noise at 6 dimf. Higher speeds could be problematic, but it's not absolutely impossible to make a call. The number 8 position is held by Freedcon TCOM. Freedcon TCOM is one of the cheapest devices on the market. You can have a dual pack for less than $100, which is more than affordable. TCOM is almost exactly the same as TCOMSC. The only difference is that TCOM doesn't have an LCD screen, which is not a deal breaker considering the fact that you don't really see that LCD while riding. The rechargeable 400mAh all battery can deliver up to 10 hours of talking on the phone or up 7 hours of intercom use. Recharge takes up to 4 hours. The speaker performance is not impressive, especially when it comes to bass reproduction. The mid-range and especially the vocals are very clear and articulate important for music but also for communication and highs are present but not sparkling. The mic does the job. We have only tested the boom mic. It can isolate most of the noise at 7 dimf and the voice sounds natural and undistorted on the other end. The mic performance actually surpassed our expectations. Next at number 9, we have Cardo Scalar Rider Freecom 4. Freecom 4 is not as advanced communication device as PacTalk or PACT ALK Bold but it's more affordable. In case you are riding in a smaller pack of up to four riders and you want to save some money, Freecom 4 is a great choice. This device is much slimmer and has a lower profile than the pack dock, and it doesn't feature roller wheel, but it still features that recognizable cardo look. The unit is very compact and sturdy. Freecom 4 is I67 certified, fully waterproof, and dustproof, which is a great advantage of cardo devices over any other Bluetooth motorcycle helmet communication device. The installation is simple, and it takes 10-15 minutes. You can use the spring clip, or you can simply stick the audio kit to the helmet. Wiring is a bit harder than attaching the audio kit to the helmet, but it shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Battery delivers more than satisfying performance. It can deliver 13 hours of talking and can be fully recharged in 3 hours. Speakers are not the most impressive part of this unit, but they do the job. The bass is tiny and the emphasis is on the mid-range reproduction and especially on vocals. The speaker can get pretty loud, which is important when you are in a noisy environment. The mic delivers an impressive performance, especially the boom mic. It's capable of delivering clear and undistorted voice at 67 tenth. Finally, the number 10 position is dominated by Yiding Bluetooth headset. If you are looking for a cheap option that does the basic things, you should check out Yiding Bluetooth headset. When it comes to inexpensive Bluetooth motorcycle helmet speakers, we are more into Freedcon devices, but Yiding is also a viable option. You can have a pair of these for less than $100. This is another simple looking device similar to all the previous ones. The control buds are on the front and top side while the charging port and 2.5 on port. You can use it to connect any non-Bluetooth source are located at the bottom. Charging port is at the same time the headset socket. When it comes to durability, this is not the most impressive device, but it's solidly built and it looks rugged. The manufacturer claims it's waterproof, but we haven't been able to find any info on the actual IP certification. The installation doesn't take too long. The spring clip that's supposed to keep the unit in place is made of plastic and it doesn't look that strong, but it keeps the unit in place. You can always use the adhesive plate instead of spring clip if you think that's a better option. The speakers are not the most impressive part of this headset. There's practically no bass at all, but the mids and vocals sound pretty clear. The speakers are good for vocal-oriented music and for communication. The microphone is usable. We can even say really good. It's not as good as Sino or Cardo, but it does attenuate a significant amount of noise. The conversation is pretty clear at 6 dimf. www.amazon.com slash gp slash product slash bonef fcwcpi. That's all for today. We upload outdoor product review videos every single day. So, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for the upcoming video notification.